Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. I want to provide a disclaimer in the beginning of today's video, just letting you guys know that because I never struggled with an ED or a disorder of any kind, I am not hypersensitive to specific words like skinny, binge eating, guilty, and things like that. These are just things that I say in my day-to-day -day life that have nothing to do with an emotion tied to it. So if you are sensitive to these types of words or get easily offended or upset, or they trigger a response in you that makes you feel like you're going to do something negative, I would highly suggest to not watch today's video. This video is for all of my girlies who have been struggling with their weight and feel like they want to make a change without being super obsessed with it. So if that sounds like your thing, then keep on watching. 2024, we are standing on business, and my business is keeping my body fit, tight, and gorgeous. As someone who has recently lost 36 pounds, the numbers just keep going up, baby, I wanted to give you guys my top six rituals that have allowed me to lose the weight quickly, efficiently, and have kept me on track to making sure that I don't fall back into old habits. Now, I've done a few videos already addressing my gut issues, my hormonal imbalance, dealing with IBS, fasting and everything in between. So if you guys wanna see that type of content, then I will link it down below in the description box and put it on the screen. But essentially, we were struggling with a lot of things. There are some life-changing rituals that I have implemented in my routine that have really allowed me to get the weight off quickly. A lot of people associate weight loss and just a lot of hard work in the same sense, which essentially it is hard work, but I have rewired my brain and my mindset to viewing it as my new lifestyle that does not feel like work and it just feels like my new normal. So if you are entering your sexy skinny girl era in 2024, then keep on watching and give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. Now, let's just get into the video. The first life-changing ritual that has completely allowed me to get rid of the weight and keep it off has been three different things. Caloric deficit, fasting, and detoxing. I want you guys to put this all in one category. Everybody's body is different and everybody's body responds differently to different methods. What has really been life-changing for me and a ritual that I have stuck to was keeping my calories in a deficit, making sure that I'm fasting so I will not eat for certain periods periods of the day, and also making sure that when I started my journey that I detoxed my body. And let's just say I splurge or do something a little naughty over the weekend, I will make sure that on Monday I will detox the body again. So these things have really allowed me to making sure that I don't feel guilty about one night out with a girlfriend and having a piece of bread or a pasta dish or whatever, and I'm able to keep the weight off and keep it constantly coming off with being able to still slightly indulge and make sure that I am still living life to my fullest as a 26 year old bad bitch in Jersey. Now you can get your caloric deficit calculated for you. I know for me, I am not a calorie counter, but I was able to do the easy math. I just don't eat the same amount of calories I was eating before. And what I was eating before was astronomical. So I make sure that I eat a lot less, have smaller portion sizes, and it keeps me in a deficit naturally. My full what I eat in a day video is coming really soon, but I wanted to show you guys something that I found online that has really helped me and it's four ways to stay in a calorie deficit and actually remain full. So it's prioritizing protein, eating high volume foods, uh, making sure you're consuming a lot of water, which I drink so much water a day and sleep. I also recorded on my fitness pal, which is a great app to have if you want to record your food, um, just to see like what you're consuming for the day. I actually had 1700 calories today, which is actually a little bit higher than normal. I think I recorded it like two other times and it was like in the 1600 realm, but this is still really great because I eat super healthy. I had a poke bowl, I had some peppers, cucumbers, grapes, and I also had rice and soup for dinner. So this is just my way of staying on top of my food and knowing that I am staying in a caloric deficit without starving myself. And honestly, a great way to have a caloric deficit and making sure that you're not eating and overeating and binge eating is by making sure that you guys do some sort of fasting. Now, intermittent fasting is still something that a lot of people are against. I literally do not care. And if you're gonna sound off down below, don't even bother. Start with the basics. What is fasting? Fasting is a healing state you put your body in that will burn fat, supercharge your brain, kill hunger, improve your sleep, take away chronic pain, and slow down aging. It's the most miraculous tool that your body's ever been built with. Huh. I don't think I've ever heard anybody describe it like that. That when you 
go without food for a certain period of time, it impacts blood sugar, which then triggers all of these incredible, well-documented and researched health benefits. We have to have a tool that works for everybody's health that everybody can do, the busiest executive down to the person who's living paycheck to paycheck. And when you look at it through that lens, fasting is the tool. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. For me, I have done immense research. And honestly, everybody thinks that they're right on the internet, whether it's someone who intermittent fasts and says that it's the best thing since sliced bread, or somebody who says you can eat whatever you want and still lose weight. There's always going to be someone who thinks that they are right and they are the smartest thing on the planet. And for me, it was just simply caloric deficit and making sure that I was eating at a specific time that was most conducive for my body. So I like to eat between the windows of like three and seven. That has been really a great way for me to keep my caloric deficit and also making sure that I'm not overeating or binge eating. There's so many different things. I've been implementing more things into my diet and kind of, you know, introducing more foods. But when I first started, I was eating roughly the same thing every day. And that really helps you in losing weight. If you eat the same type of food every single day, the weight is gonna come off even quicker. And detoxing my body was absolutely crucial during this process. I needed to cleanse out my body by eliminating certain things from my diet, making sure that I was eating specific foods that help with the detox process and allowing your body to have that full reset. This was a ritual that I started in the very beginning and now let's just say I indulge on a Sunday or Saturday night and I know for a fact that I want to get back into routine on Monday. I'm going to make sure that I start that detox on Monday by drinking lemon water with cucumber, having ginger tea, making sure that I eat certain things that are going to cleanse out the body and making sure that everything is off to a great start for the week. Okay, number two for a life-changing ritual that has completely changed changed my life and has allowed me to lose 36 pounds, has been drinking water immediately in the day and always grabbing for water in every instance. So I know I was talking shit about Stanley Cups about a year ago and here I am having one. My sister actually got me this for Christmas and I'm not gonna lie, it is kind of life changing. I love that it keeps the drink cold and I love the size of it. You want to choose water every time, make it a ritual, make it a habit, make it a part of your routine, romanticize it, put different things in it like fruits, like berries, like mint, ginger, lemon, whatever it is that's going to spice it up and is going to make you wanna reach for it, get it. Fancy cup is really all I need for wanting to drink more water. Now I can completely cut out drinking caffeine and I completely cut out drinking alcohol. These are things that definitely contribute to you gaining weight. Also caffeine can really throw off your cortisol levels and there are so many different things that could be keeping you overweight. If you have been dealing and suffering with being overweight for many years, then you know that just a clean diet and working out doesn't always necessarily help. And there's other things and issues that we need to attend to like our gut issues, our cortisol levels, our hormonal imbalance, our adrenals, different things that are affecting the reason why we can't lose weight. Also stress is a huge huge part of it too. So making sure that you attend to those issues, drinking more water, flushing out the system with something healthy and hydrating is actually going to make a difference. I think that my overconsumption of water in the best way has allowed me to be so healthy in my colon. I don't get backed up even though I'm fasting and a lot of people ask like, don't you feel like you have constipation issues and things like that? I don't, and I think it's a combination of eating high fiber diet, which I eat a lot of vegetables and a lot of fruit and a lot of things with fiber in them. I drink a lot of water, so I'm flushing out the system constantly, and I'm not drinking anything that's going to disrupt my gut bacteria, like extremely sugary drinks, caffeinated drinks, and a lot of just alcohol and crap. I have completely removed the empty calories from my diet, and I'm telling you, that completely changes how your body responds to weight loss. Back in the day, I used to have a Starbucks drink in the morning. Then for lunch, I would maybe order a Jersey Mike sub or go to Chipotle and also get a drink, whether it was a strawberry lemonade or a pure leaf sweet tea. Love them both, but here we are already at lunch drinking two sugary drinks that are empty calories. Then for dinner, I might have a little bit of water, but then I'll also possibly get some sort of other drink like a juice from my fridge or anything in that regard. And here we are constantly drinking things that are not necessarily going to contribute to your weight loss. Of course it feels like, oh my God, it's so silly. Of course I can keep drinking these things, but it does add up. And when I completely removed it, I was seeing such drastic weight loss. Also with removing alcohol will be huge in your journey, especially if you are a big social drinker. Okay, the number three life-changing ritual that has completely changed my life and has allowed me to lose 36 pounds is movement. And by movement, I mean low impact movement. So when I started going into my caloric deficit, I stopped weight training 
altogether. I felt like it was not conducive to my body. I talked about this in my past few videos in regards to my weight loss. And to be honest, guys, I was scared to work out the way I was because I was not eating as much and I wasn't fueling my body as much. So I was trying to adjust to my new normal and being in a caloric deficit definitely gave me that feeling of just needing to slow down a little bit, which I think is super healthy for the body anyway. So in this, I actually researched, you know, different ways to tone up and lose weight along this journey by still being in caloric deficit. And the answer was always walking, low impact workouts and anything that has to do with just moving the body in some way. As someone who lives a sedentary lifestyle and I work from home, I don't really have a huge activity monitor going on all day long. I decided to just walk more. I like to walk a few miles every week and I will go on the treadmill, listen to you know my headphones and I won't even do 12, 3.30. That's even pushing it. I will literally just walk. Regular incline, just walk. And I walk for an hour, hour and a half, depends, doesn't really matter to me. I just walk until I don't wanna walk anymore. And I don't really break a crazy sweat, but I wanna make sure that I'm in increasing my heart rate. That is what's crucial for me in my journey. I just want my heart pumping. I want it to move. I want it to feel good. And that has been helping me along this journey. You'd be surprised how much low impact movement actually changes the body. Now, if you're struggling with obesity or you really want to tone up the body, I want you to do very amazing low impact workouts like Pilates, bar, or just putting on a YouTube video where you're able to just do some sort of low impact cardio workout. This is so good for your cardiovascular system. There's so many different benefits to doing low impact cardio or just working out in general. I don't need to go as hard anymore and it has been crucial in my journey. If in the future I wanna target a specific body part, I might go back to weight training, maybe to grow the glutes or something in that regard. But as of right now, I am totally okay with just doing very low impact workouts. So instead of focusing on, oh my God, I wanna weight train, I wanna cut the diet, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. What I would recommend is to attend to the diet first because that is internal. And just making sure that you're moving your body in a healthy way as a human being is really all you need. I always like to think about Mediterranean diet and where the longest living people are. And it's usually in Europe and, and also in Japan. The longest living people in the world live in places considered blue zones. And these blue zones are Okinawa, Japan, Sardinia, Italy, Nicoya, Costa Rica, Ikaria, Greece, and Loma Linda, California. These people are known to live well into their 90s and are happy throughout most of their lives. And some of the things that they're known to do to live this happier, healthier, more fulfilling life is eating a much healthier diet, mostly plant-based, but not strictly vegetarian, practicing a healthier way of life by sleeping well, staying physically active, and having alcohol in moderation. And finally, having a sense of purpose in their life. Many of them are active in their communities, have a sense of duty to help their peers, and practice living minimally, which means they don't waste time obsessing over needs and material wants. Follow along to know more about how to live happy. And if you think about what they do, they eat probably very low portion sizes of the Mediterranean diet, whether that's fish, vegetables, cheese, things in that regard, and then they walk all the time. They're constantly moving their body. I don't believe that everybody that lives in these places is weight training 300 pounds every day. They walk, they move their body, and they eat healthy, light foods. And there's still carbs, there's still fats, there's still dairy, they just eat it in a minimal amount. We don't need to have portion sizes this big. And what's so wonderful is when I go out to eat now, I'm able to take my dinner home and make it dinner for the next night as well. So I get a bang for my buck every time. Okay, the fourth life-changing ritual that has contributed to my weight loss and helping me lose 36 pounds has been the art of balance. If you want to lose weight, you need to understand balance because stress, high intense work schedules, making no time for yourself and having literally zero self-care in your routine is going to keep you overweight or struggling in some way with your weight. So essentially what I mean by balance is making sure that you're doing digital detoxes, allocating time for friends and family, having time for just yourself, slowing down the art of living slower and stress-free. How can you slow down your routine in your day-to-day -day life to make it more enjoyable and feminine? Because if you think about femininity and all of that, it's all about the art of being slower and more intentional with our life. And I know for me that intentionality has been crucial in my routine. 
I didn't go into this weight loss journey with stress, anger, freaking out, any of that. I literally was just living my life. I was fasting, I was keeping myself busy, I was living slower, and the weight flew off the body. And I really do believe it had a lot to do with the emotional attitude behind it. It has to do with understanding the art of balance and understanding when to work, when to play, when to rest, when to hang out, when to vibe out, like all of these things you have to really understand in order Order to lose weight if you're in a high stress environment this could make your weight fluctuate from you know having gaining a lot of weight but also losing a lot of weight due to the intensity of the irregularity of your life I know for me in 2024 everything is going to be scheduled out this has been a way for me to keep my life together happy and safe for me it has allowed me to feel like okay I know what nights I'm going out to dinner with friends I know what nights I'm gonna be alone I know what nights I want to be strict with this I know what nights I want to make sure I'm working and in knowing these things I make sure that my schedule performs according to plan and I don't feel overwhelmed or stressed out I always make sure I allocate a day a week where I'm just literally have nothing planned other than just rest you really have to prioritize this in this routine a ritual for me has always been intentionality and living slow and I've been really prioritizing that in these past few months and I do believe that 36 pounds flew off my body since September because of it okay five the very last ritual that is super important in your weight loss journey that has really helped me and contributed to it for me is productivity and I'm gonna explain why when you are productive and you are not bored or procrastinating or you don't know what's next you don't have this urge to binge eat or do unhealthy low vibrational activities that contribute to your weight being the way it is when I decided to implement healthy productivity into my life by balancing my life in a healthy way also understanding that work is work and play is play I have never felt better and I feel like it has really helped me with the weight loss just completely coming off the body and me feeling good in my skin you really want to do a full-on cleanse to get this started a soul cleanse a life cleanse a mind cleanse a space cleanse you'd be surprised how many things we can cleanse in our life to prepare us for this new chapter I don't like doing anything big in my life without some sort of plan because I never am able to stick to it so have Having the productivity in planning out my life according to this new version of myself. Who am I in this new, thinner, sexier, happier Haley? What does she do? Is her house clean? Is her bedroom tidy? Is she wearing a certain outfit? Is she doing this, you know, affirmation? There are so many different ways that we can do a soul and life cleanse and just keeping ourselves productive. Instead of spending certain days binge eating and, and bored doing X, Y, and Z, why not just just find ways to do other things. A lot of people ask me, how do you prevent yourself from eating all of the time? And the way I did was telling myself that instead of eating, do this instead. And I know it sounds kind of ridiculous because people who have never struggled with an eating issue would say, oh my God, just eat. But no, that's the problem. Eating has always been the issue. So when I feel hungry sometimes, and I know I'm home and as somebody who works from home and has a flexible schedule, maybe I'll leave the house for a little bit and, and go for a drive. And I know me, I don't like fast food, so it wouldn't really necessarily make me wanna go to drive-thrus or anything in that regard. But if you're someone who struggles with eating on the go, then make sure that you stay home more. It all really has to do with the tailoring of your own life. Do you struggle with when you get in the car, you have to immediately get food? Do you have to go to Chipotle, McDonald's, Taco Bell? Like, are these places that are gravitating towards you when you're in the car? If that's the case, Put a healthy snack in the car. Make sure you have something accessible to you that is going to keep you on the straight and narrow in this process. But I like to use healthy distractions as a way to stop with the binge eating. I'll do my makeup. I will plan out content. I will go for a drive. I'll play with my dogs. I'll go outside for a walk. I'll listen to a podcast. I'll find something in my house that I can reorganize. Like I like to just distract myself and even down to sometimes timing myself and having an alarm go off for when it is time to eat so that I know like, uh, maybe I should cheat and eat a couple hours earlier. No, because then you're gonna eat when you wanna eat again later. So I have found that keeping my schedule strict and to the point without feeling overwhelmed or upset or anxious about it has been just implementing healthy goals and plans to keep myself productive, happy, and healthy. And when you see the weight fall off, you learn how to stick to this so much better. You wanna know how I've stuck to this all these months? It's seeing the weight fall off. I literally visually see it in all my videos. I can go back six videos, my face looks different. 
my face literally looks different. It is such a beautiful thing to see my body change drastically every single time I wake up based off of just the healthy things that I've been implementing in my life. These rituals have completely guided me into making sure that my weight loss has been so satisfying and happy for myself. And I hope that my tips and tricks can really help you guys in your own journey. I know it's difficult, but I want you guys to trick your mind into telling yourself it isn't. I want you guys to tell yourself this is your new normal, this is your new lifestyle. And if you wanna be sexy, beautiful, thin, happy, and just healthy, then you have to do some hard things in order to get there. And I hope that this can inspire you to getting there. I appreciate you guys so freaking much, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye everyone. Mwah.